guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarListens365.com. Well, I released my first Dio song last week, and it was a big hit, and everybody wanted me to do Rainbow in the Dark now, so I'm going to jump on it and do it for you guys. Uh, we are in standard tuning here, so nothing um, too difficult there. Before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, ring the notification bell so you know when I release a new video, and check out my Guitar Academy at GuitarListens365.com. Link in the description. Uh, really systematic guitar courses to teach you from beginner to advanced um, all different topics from uh, guitar tone, technique, ear training, theory, improvisation. It's all there, so please go check it out. All right, so let's start here um, with... The, now, the thing about this is very similar riff that goes throughout the, the song for both the chorus and the verse and the intro. But there's a bunch of fills that... Um, Vivian Campbell is doing that are a little bit different almost every time. So um, not almost every time, but uh, so they're important enough that I'm going to kind of cover them relatively in depth. So you might want to tab this out a little bit. Say, okay, these are the fills that he's doing in verse verse one, you know, and then then the, the the chorus and the outro chorus and stuff like that. That might help you memorize it, or uh, you kind of do it like they do live, where he doesn't really they don't really pay attention to that. They just kind of just do a bunch of bills just kind of something similar you know they're just kind of doing whatever they want there there's kind of like three or four fills that they're using but it's just the order that they're done in it's kind of weird so um you can try to stick with that or just kind of play something similar all right so we're going to start here with this this power chord third fret power chord off the low e string and then into the main riff which we're I've just been talking about for too long All right, so now we're going to play the third fret power chord into the A power chord, and then a slight bend at the third fret of the low E into the open E. And then what we do, we're going to do is we're going to play this power chord off the first fret of the low E. Um, and then the open E with that still the threes there on the A and the D. So it's then back, and then move that into the third fret. So we have this. And then we have this little fill that ends it. Probably the most important thing with these fills, a lot of pinch harmonics, and then you're going to sound like it. So this first fill is probably the most common one used throughout the song. So that's, that's just three a couple times muted on the low E. And then you're going to play, pull off three to zero on the A, and play two. And then, there you're going to play open A, hammer two, pull back off to the open. And then to the third fret there on the uh, low E. A lot, of, a lot of times when you're doing that, a little slight bend, in, slight bend on it. So we have this. So all together. So you can see those pinch harmonics that I put on that. And now we play the riff again. Now you'll notice that when I did that, I get a lot bigger chord in there. This was uh, something that also happened in Holy Diver that we covered last week. Um, so if you didn't follow that, you should watch every video, right? You should watch every video of mine, and then you wouldn't need help with this. So when you get down to here, instead of just doing the power horse, what he's doing is you can grab the power chord and the B in the high E string, but you're kind of like arcing your, your, your index finger so that G string is muted. You can't hear that G string in there. So basically what you gotta do is put pressure to the tip of your finger and then the very bottom of your finger, and then the middle of your index finger doesn't need to be any pressure there because 
these two notes are in front of it, so it's not going to affect it. So what it's only going to do is mute that G string. So you get a big, huge F power chord, and then he does it up here too. So it's, if, you, if you bar too much, it'll sound like a minor chord. But you want to just relax the middle of that index finger. So it, that, the second time around, is played like that. Kind of like that. And then we have this. So that goes 3-0, three, 3-0 zero, three, zero on the low E. This is the second feel. You can pick these or pull them all off. And then do that twice. And then pull off 3-0 to zero on the A. And then 2-0 to zero over to the third fret on the low E string. And back to the riff. That's the same as the first one. Same as the first one. All right, so it's it's the fills are what it's all about, and getting that big chord form in there. So then the verses are pretty repetitive when it comes to the fills. So we can play every verse uh, pretty much the same way. So uh, let's take a look at that. Alright, so we start this riff, it's mostly the power chord version instead of the, well they're both power chords, but not the high, not adding the high strings in there, so it's just, until you get here, then you add those top two strings, so you'll see that. And then that same fill that we did, I said is the most common fill, and repeat. Now there, the second time through the riff, I didn't go into a you know, to a fill. I just held held that G chord, and then there's a slight bend at the third fret of the low E to start the riff over. So so far we got in the verse. And then we start the riff over the same way. And then that, so that's kind of like the end of the first half, and there's a little of the first, which is, and then there's a little fill, which is just three, zero, two, zero on the A string, then over to three on the low E. And then we basically repeat the same thing. Except you just kind of, uh, you don't do that fill at the end now. You don't do that. That's just to start over. But at the end, the last time. Little pick scrape there that takes us to the pre-chorus. Pre-chorus is just this. To the chorus there. So we uh, basically just um, just the E minor, which mute that G though, so it's really just an E power chord. Now the upbeat of the four, you're gonna go to that F power chord, the first fret, and then add the top two strings there. So we have this. Two, three, four, and so that. The end of the four there, you're gonna hit that, go back to the E chord, so we have this. And then once again, the upbeat of the four, you're gonna back to the F sharp. So.
to that G power chord. A little slight bend there. And then we're back to the chorus, which is similar, which is pretty much like the verse riff. So it's really short. So it's that same verse riff, uh, but with this little fill at the end. Which is three zero, three zero. And then that same riff that we've been doing before. And then and really the second time through when you get to that G. So after that chorus, it goes back through the verse, the pre-chorus and the chorus, and everything is just kind of pretty similar. Like I said, you might see little variations of the fill slight, but it's not really worth going through everything completely. So um, let's go to the solo now. Now the solo is, is really cool, and it's over that main uh, kind of chorus riff, and then at the end of it over the pre-chorus riff. All right, so let me play through the solo for you real quick, and then I'll show you how to play it phrase by phrase. So, some really fun stuff in that one. So we're going to start here with this first phrase. All right, so that's going to be a, you know, a little slide down the low E, and then a bend at the 10th fret, a whole set bend with some vibrato on it on the A string. Then play 5-3. Then down here to the 2nd fret with a little trill between 2 and 3. And we have this. So that's kind of going up, up the, the A minor pentatonic. And you're going to play 5 7 on the A string twice, heavily palm muted. Then 5 7 on the D, and then 5 7 on the G. So we have. And then. And then play 5 4. You go between, there's just some pinch harmonics in here. It's between 5 and 4 a couple times. And then into a trill between those two notes. And then end that with the fifth fret there on the G. So we have this. All right, and then we have kind of this longer sequence, which looks like this. All right, so um, just kind of memorizing these notes. Paul mute them at the, at the beginning. So we have five, seven on the D and the G. Then we go five, six, eight. So uh, up on the, uh, on the uh, B string. Then back down to six. And then here we're gonna go back up, but we're gonna skip the six. We're gonna play five, eight. So we have this. Then over to five, seven, eight on the high E string. That's right. So all the way up, five, seven, eight, back down. Over to eight on the B. All right, and now we kind of have this new, after you get to that B string, we have this. So that's kind of where you want to look at that. So from this, really from this note here. So 
So that's going to be um, 5 7 on the high E, and then a quick little trill. Then between 8 on the B, then back to 5, then back to the 8. And then do that same lick that we just did. So it's kind of the same lick repeated twice. We have this. So. And then when you hit that last eight into a big bend, slow full bend, and then. And that, that little lick that ends it. Five on the high E. Pull off eight to five on the B string twice. Over to seven on the G. And then pick it again. Bend and release. And then it has a quick little hammer five, seven, pull off to five slide down to four, so all together. All right, next section. All right, so that's kind of one of those crazy legato licks where, so we just, across A minor, A natural minor. So it's going to start with just uh, 10, I'm uh, sorry, 12, 15 on the high E. And then, and then from there, we're going to do a lot of legato type stuff. We're going to play 13, hammer on 15, pull back off to 13, over to 12, down to 12, pull off to 12. Let's play this. Over to 15 on the B, back to that 12 on the high E. And then back down to the B string, pull off to 15 to 13 to 12, hammer back up to 15, back down, over to the um, 14th fret on the uh, G string. So it is. All right, and now we have this kind of really disjointed sound and lick. Um, and it's kind of interesting, uh, the way to make it sound like the recording at least, I don't know if there's a little overdub in here, but you start first like this. So you're gonna start first by 12, 14 on, on the G, and then 17 on the B. And then from there on, we're gonna have double stops the last two hits. So it's always a little, it's like a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So the first one, we're just single notes. And you might want to play that down, down, up, just because that's going to be what you have to do for the remainder of them. So just get used to that feel. And then we're going to do this, 12 on the G. And then you're going to play the 14 and 17 on the B together. And then 17 on the B and the high E together with an upstroke. So we have this. So that's kind of down, down, up. So when you play this down, you gotta play that whole chord, that borrow the pinky and this. All right, so that's kind of a, a interesting lick there. Um, and then we have this next section, it looks like this. So that's that next lick. So it comes up here to play 17, 19, 20, 19, 17. So kind of just go up and down through those three notes. Over to 20 on the B, and back to that 17. And then it starts getting fast. And the lick that he does here, the repeated lick, is one of two things. We have this, 20, 17, 19, 17. So, then he'll play 20 on the B, and then back to that 17 on the high E. So that's lick number one. And 
then lick number two is just going 20 to 17 and 19 to 17. So what he's doing, he kind of starts by going to the one where he goes down to the B string. And as he gets into it, he just does the one without the B string and then goes back to it a couple times. It's so fast, it doesn't really matter which one you're playing. You can just kind of freely, randomly mix them up. Into a bend there at the 20th fret there on the B string. And then from that bend, we have this. We have this. So that's gonna, from, the, from that bend, you're gonna play 17 on the high E real quick and then pull off 20 to 17 on the um, B string and then over to 17 on the um, G string. And that's gonna start our pattern. So that pattern, little four note lick, common blues lick, but played very fast here. 20 on the G, and to 17 on the B, hammer 20 on the B, pull back off the 17. So that's like. And you'll hear him a couple of times, he'll actually double the trill on the B string. So Into a bend at the uh, big bend at the uh, 19th fret on the G, and then we're there at the resolve the bend. All right, so now we have this next section, which starts some legato licks down the G string. It sounds like this. So that's the first half of it. So we're gonna play 17 on the G, hammer 19, pull off back to that 17 slide down to 16 and then kind of do the same thing hammer 17 pull off to 16 slide down to 14 now do the same look again hammer 16 pull off to 14 slide down to 12 so we this and we're all the way down to 12 and hammer 14 pull off to 12 so we this now when we get here we have this which is a quick little double stop at the 20th, 12th fret on the uh, B in the high E. And then pick the 13th fret by itself on the um, high E string. And then we have this, we have a quick hammer, 12 to 13 on the B, pull off to 12, over to 14 on the G, and then go, play 12, 13, 15, 13 on the B. So we have this, very staccato type sound in here. And then again, once again at the end, the same lick. So we have this. So I'm sorry. All right, now from there, we start doing the legato stuff down the scale, down the G string again. So we have. So we're going to. That same look. You can pick it whenever you, after, after every shift, after every slide. So we have do that lick here to 12, 14, and then 10 and 12, 9 and 10. So we have it's that same hammer pull slide. Then it's between 7 and 9, 5 and 7, 4 and 5. Two and four, and then pull that off all the way to the open string. Fair enough. When you get down to the open E's, when you go into those harmonics, so we have this two harmonics of the fifth fret of the B string, then the fifth fret of the high E, then back to the B string fifth fret. And then we play the fifth fret on the uh, G string, bend and release the seventh. You can put a harmonic on there if you want. Pull off to five, and then over to seven on the uh, D string.
Now, out of the solo, we had this quick little interlude section, which is like just similar to the verse riff again, and then back to the verse, back to the pre-chorus. Um, chorus number three finally introduces a couple of little different fill, a different fill that is done repeated in the outro chorus. So we're going to kind of cover that. So the third chorus um, towards the very end of the song looks like this. <laughs> All right, so that little fill, the second one there, um, we have this starting at similar that we've seen before, and then we repeat. And then, so the second time here in the third chorus, right before the outro chorus, is. Now that's a lick that's gonna be played a lot in the outro chorus. So that's three zero pull off on the low E string and then three on the low E two on the A so we have this and then pull off three zero on the A two zero on the A and then play three on the low E so we have the whole lick is we have this all together And that second ending, just go up to that G and hold it. All right, now we have this outro chorus where we have that lick again, which is kind of a combination of what we just did, that new lick, and the, the regular, you know, thing that we do usually in the verse. So, uh, anyway, looks like this. So you can see right there, what I'm doing is, that little lick is what I just, the, the new lick that we just did, but instead of just going here, we do this. So just like the ending of the regular, the main lick that we've done. So like this. Read that. All right, so like I said, the, getting the fills exactly right, sh you'd have to kind of write it down and really do some serious memorization. But if you um, want to just kind of go for the sound of it, kind of like they play it live and not worry about getting every fill exactly right, just kind of doing what you want with those three or four different types of fills and just kind of mixing them up whatever you want. Nobody will ever notice. All right? And I won't tell anybody. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.